I'm LeVar Burton, host of Reading Rainbow, and I'll be reading my own story, but I wanted first to talk a little bit about Children's Grief Awareness Day today. There is a lot of grief happening in the world today, and not just by grown-ups. Kids are grieving too, and a lot of our grief is happening inside, where we can't always see it. Well, today is a day to notice all of the kids who are having feelings that they're holding in because they feel like it's too scary to let those feelings out. Today is a day to support these kids, a day to let them know that no matter what it is they're feeling, it's all okay. And it's a day to know that no matter what it is we're feeling, that there are always people who are here to support us, people who care about us, people who are eager to help us sort out our feelings so that we can feel okay about them. So look out for those helpers. The Rhino Who Swallowed a Storm is about, well, a young rhino who swallows a whole storm full of feelings and doesn't know how to get them out. But luckily, he looks for the helpers and he finds them. The Rhino Who Swallowed a Storm by LeVar Burton and Susan Schaefer Bernardo with illustrations by Courtney Fletcher. I hope you enjoy. In the middle of the morning, Mika Mouse trembled under her blanket. Oh, I forgot to tell you, the lead character in this story, Mika Mouse, was named after my daughter, Michaela. When she was little, um, she was a huge, well, she's still a huge Disney fan, and her nickname has always been Mika. So she is the Mika Mouse in the story. She's 25 now, but she's still Mika Mouse to me. In the middle of the morning, Mika Mouse trembled under her blanket. A storm boomed outside her window. Rain crashed against the glass. Wind rattled the shutters. More than anything else, Mika was afraid of storms. A powerful hurricane had destroyed her home a year before. I'm scared, Papa, she said. We are safe, Mika. This storm will pass soon, said Papa. Would you like me to read you a story? I know just the one to help you feel better. Mika loved books, and Papa's voice soothed in a way that made her forget all about the thunder. Papa opened the book and began. Long, long ago, before there were words, animals roamed in bountiful herds. Little rhinoceros lived happy and free, exploring mountains and meadows, rivers and trees. His world was delightful and chock full of magic, until out of the blue, that magic turned tragic. A storm swept through the valley, turning bright sky to black. A flash flood came raging, no time to react. Lost in the thundering, no time for wondering. Chaos and lightning, fury so frightening. Earthquaking him, shaking, water rumbling him, tumbling. Raggedy, jaggedy, senseless calamity. The storm crashed through his world and tore it apart and took away everything dear to his heart. Rhino was stunned by the terrible scene, death and destruction all through the ravine. Enraged by the pain of such a great loss, Rhino acted without a thought to the cost. Rhino looked at the world, all tattered and torn, stood out on the ledge and swallowed the storm. Inside his belly, he felt the storm growing. Inside his head, he heard howling and blowing like a tornado. He spun as the storm raged inside, growing bigger and bigger, wider and wide. When he finally stopped, when he regained control, he was at the very bottom of a very deep hole. What to do? Rhino worried as rain dripped down his face. I'm lost and I'm lonely and in such a dark place. At just the right moment to comfort and guide him, a spider dropped down and dangled beside him. The world up above is shattered and gray, 
but it's where you belong. So you must find a way to let that storm out and move through your sorrow. You'll find many helpers on your road to tomorrow. Oh, but that hole was dreadfully deep and the walls around him were slippery steep. Rhino tried to climb out, but was losing all hope when Kangaroo heard him and threw down a rope. Though Rhino was heavy from the weight of the storm, they towed him right up, got him safe, dry, and warm. We're strong and steady and always ready. When danger strikes, we hop to it. Fire or flood, snow or mud, when help is needed, we'll pull you through it. That was Kangaroo. Well, watching those heroes do what they did best gave Rhino the strength to set off on his quest. But that storm he was clutching made him buzzy and blurry. It kept his brain foggy. It filled him with worry. Where do I go? What do I do? How will I ever make it through? After every dark night, there comes a new day. Be kind, do your best, and you'll find a way. Up comes the sun. There are steps to complete. There isn't a map. Just follow your feet. Could you tell those were bees? Well, Rhino followed his feet to a wallowing spot where he plopped on a rock and had a deep thought. I'm tired of caging the wind and the rain, exhausted from holding this anger and pain. We're all on this earth to learn and to grow. A wise old tortoise chimed in from below. Allowing yourself to start feeling your feelings is the very first step on your journey toward healing. It doesn't much matter if you're fast or you're slow. If you want to move forward, just trust and let go. Well, Rhino shook and he shimmied and he stomped in the muck and just like he'd hoped, that storm came unstuck. At first, one little raindrop leaked out of his eye. Then, Rhino let go and had a good cry. His tears formed a river as they flowed to the sea where a pot of whales swam, happy and free. I do feel better. Rhino thought as he drifted. Then up swam a whale and Rhino was lifted. If you ever feel blue, the whale said with a spout, remember to breathe. Breathe in and breathe out. Sing your own song and take it deep, deep, deep. Then rise above with a joyful leap. As he floated home on a gentle wave, Rhino felt calm and strong and brave. His vision was clear like the sky above and he looked at his world through eyes filled with love. So he thanked the kind spider and the brave kangaroo and all of the others who had helped him through. He was glad to know that if he'd ever lost hope, they'd lend him a hand or throw him a rope. He had journeyed his journey a very long way to find the light in a world turned gray. He'd swallowed a storm with no thought to the cost. He'd felt all alone. He'd been tumbled and tossed. Life would bring changes, beginnings and ends, but he had faith in himself and faith in his friends. And as they curled up together, he felt loved and protected and he dreamed of a world that was safe and connected. He understood now it was love that mattered. Love could never be lost. Love could never be shattered. Papa closed the book and gave Mika a hug. I know it was scary when our home was destroyed last winter, said Papa. Bad things happen sometimes, and... We can't always control that. But we had lots of helpers, said Mika, just like Rhino did. <laughs> well, that's right, little one, Papa said in his gentle way. You're never really alone when bad things happen. There are family and friends, even people we don't know, who are always there to help us through the tough times. And just like every story with a storm, 
This one ends in a rainbow. Hi everyone, we're gonna do an art project today inspired by the book, Rhino Who Swallowed a Storm. It was developed with our friends at A Window Between Worlds and it's called Transform the Storm with Touchstones. And it's a, it's a great activity for children because it'll give them a tool to help them process big or difficult emotions and helps them with their coping strategies and makes them more resilient and more empowered. So there are some specific things we're going to need to do this art project. Colored pencils or crayons or markers. You'll need some string. You'll need a glue stick and a hole punch and some scissors, some safety scissors if you have young ones and they'll need some adult supervision cutting out the circles. Um, and at the end, if you want to use and you have some packing tape around, you can use it as a laminate. And then the last thing is the template for the Transform the Storm with Touchstones. There's a template, you can print it out. Now if you can't print out the template, no worries because Really, basically, we're creating two larger circles and, you know, four to six smaller circles. So if you have a glass, a smaller glass, and a larger lid, you can totally use those. Just trace those and use those as your circles. So you don't need to print it out, but if you can print it out, go ahead and do that. What we're going to do is create some images that remind us of what the storm feels like when we're in those big stormy emotions and another image of how we want to feel when we've let that storm out. So in my case, I've drawn a firestorm because when I'm angry or I'm upset, sometimes it feels like a raging fire. But I, when I let that storm out and I want to let that storm out because that doesn't feel good to keep that inside. When I let that storm out, I want to feel like cool, peaceful water. So that's, those are my two images. My storm is a firestorm because that's how I kind of feel when I'm upset. And when I let that storm out, I want to feel calm and serene like a pool of water. So you don't have to use images. You can also use words if there's certain words or words and images, whatever works for you. So once you've figured out what you want to draw for your storm and for the image of when you've let that storm out, then we're going to work on the other six circles. Now, what are those six circles for? Well, those six circles are going to be the things that remind us of different coping strategies or different ways that we can let go of our storm and get to that peaceful place that we want to be. Maybe it's an activity like going for a walk or a bike ride or maybe kicking your soccer ball or hitting your tether ball or maybe you have a cute pet, a cat or a dog and no matter how bad you're feeling, they make you smile. Maybe hitting a drum or writing a great song, that makes you feel better. Or writing a story or a poem. Those are wonderful ways of getting those big stormy emotions out. And taking a walk in nature is always a way of just allowing yourself to calm down and reminding yourself to breathe. So maybe we use words that remind us like to breathe, to breathe in and to breathe out like the whale. I drew a little picture of myself with my eyes closed because I have to remind myself sometimes just to close my eyes and be calm for a moment and just let myself relax. So these little six circles are reminders that make you feel better. So when you're having those big stormy emotions, you can grab this object that you're making and use these as reminders of ways to let that storm out. Okay, once your circles are all colored in, we're going to cut them out. Now, if you have little ones, make sure that you're using safety scissors and there's some adult supervision so that they only cut the paper and not themselves. So cut out your circles. Once they're all cut out, we're going to take the two larger circles and we're going to glue them together so that they're two-sided. And we're going to take the hole punch and punch a hole on the top of the large circle and at the tops of the six little circles. And at this point, if you do have packing tape and you want to make this more durable, you can laminate it by putting the tape on both sides. You'll have to, you know, cut out the, the circle again a little bit because the tape will be square and the, you want it to be a circle. So it's a little more work, but it'll be more durable. 
Okay, so once we've got all of our circles cut out with the little hole punch, now we're going to take our string and we're going to put the large circle on the string and tie it, tie a little knot. We're creating this hanging piece that we can have. Um, and then what you'll do is figure out how you want your other three circles on each side and you'll put those on and tie it together. When you're finished with this you can use this as something that you can hang on a doorknob or hang somewhere that is handy so whenever you feel these big emotions you can pick it up and look at it and remind yourself that you have some techniques, you have some coping skills, things that you can do that helps you get those big stormy emotions out and make you, makes you feel better. Okay, because we all want to feel good. We don't want to be stormy. We don't want to be like Rhino and keep those storms inside because it doesn't make us feel good. Okay, so this is our project and you guys can take as long as you want to finish it. I know I went through the directions pretty quickly. Probably take you a little bit longer. Just a quick note, you can do this project several different ways. If you want to go outside and find a rock and create uh, a piece of art where you, one side of the rock is how the storm makes you feel and how maybe you use a word or an image and the other side is how you want to feel once you've let the storm go. That's a great way. Painting rocks is fun. You could also go through some old magazines and find images of how you're feeling when the storm is uh, inside of you. and images of how you want to feel once you've let that storm go and you can use words too. find words it's really fun to go through magazines and create a collage piece of art um, and also you can go to the craft store if you want and get the their little glass beads about an inch wide and this is what a window between worlds actually started this touchstone project with you take those little glass beads and then you make a little round circle of colored paper and you can do a drawing on it or write a word and you glue that to the bottom and you can keep that in your uh, pocket or your purse and so that's there's several options for this touchstones project find which one works for you or maybe you do several um, there's no limit to creativity okay and if it makes you feel better all the better alrighty bye bye and don't forget to log on to childrensgriefawarenessday.org for more things to watch, read, or do to support grieving children all over the world. Thank you. Thank you.